Welcome to Talking with the Experts. This is where we discuss great ideas to take your business to the next level. How do we know these ideas work? Well, it's because we're talking with business owners who are using these ideas. Business owners who have years of experience and expertise. All things business by business owners for business owners. And now, here is your host, Rose Davidson. Hi, I'm Rose Davidson from Talking with the Experts. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Global Glamping Charities for their valued support. Global Glamping Charities, solving homelessness in all its forms. Reach out to them at globalglamping.org. Talking with the experts. In episode 468, Mark Ross Smith discusses with us how loyalty programs are evolving in the travel industry. Uh, I mean, if you, so Qantas owns Jetstar, and so they've got some sort of minor reciprocal benefits where if you've got status and you're flying internationally, you can some benefits there. I think you can pay some fees and get some extra points and stuff like oh, that. Okay. So they've got a bit of a quirky relationship. Um, but, you know, if you are flying, yeah, to your point, you know, really in Hong Kong, um, Cathay Pacific and Qantas, they're friends through the One World Alliance. And so I could have just leveraged that. Um, but, you know, there's, uh, there's what I call the, there's the loyalty program, which is most people think of points, right? Mm. Points are not free. There's actually quite a lot of money there. There's a lot of economics behind that. Um, and then there's what I call the business of loyalty, which is, points and selling points to banks, which is how loyalty programs, airline loyalty programs make their money. Talking with the experts. Hello and welcome to Talking with the Experts. I'm your host, Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com. Talking with the experts is about all things business by business owners for business owners. You can find it on all good podcasting streaming platforms and on YouTube. My guest today is Mark Ross-Smith, and we're going to be discussing um, how loyalty programs are evolving in the travel industry. Now, Mark is the CEO and co-founder of Loyalty Data um, Co., the uh, parent company of statusmatch.com. This is a cutting-edge loyalty platform that changes the game in airline loyalty industry. Now, Mark's been dubbed Mr. Loyalty, So uh, Mark has over a decade of experience in the industry and has been featured in major media outlets such as CNN, BBC, The Economist and The Financial Times. I'm really interested to learn about this um, status match uh, concept that Mark has. And uh, so I'd like to welcome Mark to the podcast. And hello, Mark. Hi, Rose. It's great to be here. I actually like how you introduce this cutting edge uh, business. So I, I will go with that. I'm a big fan. Well done. Yeah, well, must be because I've not heard of Status Match before. And we were talking um, offline previously. And I'd say if you could just explain how you got into what you're doing and what is Status Match? Sure. So uh, I got into this. I've been obviously obsessed with travel and flying for since I was about five years old. And so it was inevitable that I would end up in the travel industry to some degree. Uh, it really all started in about 2014. Uh, I was uh, I just sold a previous business, which was in uh, telco and social media in Australia. And uh, I thought, you know, now's a good day. You know, I've got bit of money, bit of time and no job. So what a good time to ship myself to another country and, you know, live somewhere else for a change. Right. Um, and so I, I moved, I relocated to Hong Kong at the time and it was either Hong Kong or Singapore, like, where am I going to go? Right. Cause I liked Asia a lot. And uh, so I moved to Hong Kong and, you know, when you move to a new country, it's, you need, you need to get yourself set up, right. You need your bank accounts, you need all this kind of stuff you just do again when you relocate. Right. And one of those things for me on the checklist was find a new airline, right? So obviously being Australian in Australia, I was, um, you know, big frequent flyer with Qantas. So I was one of their first Platinum One members. So I was, I was doing hundreds of flights a year, spending way too much money. And so I I'd, um, uh, started communication with Cathay Pacific based there. And I, and I said, hey, look, I've 
<clears throat> we've got this status of Qantas, um, you know, I'm relocating here. It makes more sense for me to fly your airline. I'd like, you know, I want a status match, right? So, um, and uh, they said no, right? And so the idea of a status match is, is, is pretty simple. It's like, if you've got like a gold or platinum status of one airline, another airline or hotel will give you a similar status straight off the bat. It's, it's a customer acquisition play for the airline, right? And generally this is the cheapest, fastest way to unhook a customer from one brand to another, or in my case, you know, relocating from one city to another, I'm, I'm now a free agent living in a new country, right? I can, I've now got the choice of about, yeah, I don't know, 50 airlines I could fly ba- based in a big global hub city like Hong Kong, right? And so I, I did have a real choice, you know? And uh, so Cathay Pacific said no. And I thought, oh, that's a bit odd. Why wouldn't you want some, <laughs> someone like me as a customer? So that's what kind of started on the journey. You know, how well, there's got to be other people like me out there because status matching as a concept has been around for at least 36 years. It's not a new idea. Airlines have been doing this for a long time. They know, they understand what it is. But what I've realized since is they, they're actually not that great at it. They're not that great at high value, individual high value customer acquisition. They're great at onboarding corporates. They're great at onboarding um, individuals that fly once or twice a year to go visit grandmas. They're great at this kind of stuff. Not so great in the individual customer acquisition. So at that point, I, you know, like how do you how do you break into this industry? How do you start a status match business? Because no one had created it, right? This is uncharted territory. So, you know, having a bit of time, a bit of money, I thought I'll I'll just start going to events. I'll just start going to aviation events. And I'd never worked in the airline industry at all, right? Just <laughs> being a a customer of, mm. you know, being, a, you know, always flying. So you, you, there's, there's a level of understanding you have there already. Right. And started going to industry events and realized pretty quickly that being a customer was a massive advantage. Uh, people that work at airlines are very rarely customers of their own product. When they do fly, they're on staff tickets. They're paying, you know, 500 bucks from Sydney to London in business class. And there's a different booking process, a different check-in experience. It's a totally different disconnected world and um so i started going to a lot of events and then realized that i didn't know everything funny enough <laughs> and then um and then that sort of kickstarted journey where i figured you know i need to i need to work for an airline to sort of check the box um learn a bit more about the industry um and so you know, series of events um sort of unfolded and that ended up happening, ended up running the loyalty program with Malaysia Airlines. And uh, that was pretty eye-opening, a lot of fun. And I ran their first status match promotion internally as well and made a lot of errors there as well, <laughs> learned a lot, um, but ultimately very successful for them. And so, you know, then COVID hit and then decided, you know, what's the best way we can help the industry? Because the industry is a bit not in the best shape in 2020. And... And so myself and a couple other guys that have both um, been uh, in uh, executive roles at airlines uh, running loyalty programs, we sort of got together and thought, what's the thing that, we, how can we best help the airlines and passengers at the same time? And that's kind of how Status Match was built uh, from the ground up. Mm. So I guess um, for a business owner, what's the advantage of Status Matching? As a, as a traveller, as a business owner, well, firstly, as a business owner, you should be putting all your expenses on a credit card and earning points. <laughs> Let's, yeah. start there. Let's start there because there's a significant opportunity. Um, you know, it, it's it's little things like you're paying your, your your tax and all sort of stuff. You know, you put as much on credit cards as you possibly can. Put them. I mean, as long as it makes sense financially, because you sometimes got to pay surcharges, right? Yeah. So, uh, long as it makes sense, start earning the miles, the, the points, and you know, p- points get you so far. It gets you maybe business class seat. It's it's a bit of a cost saving there on maybe your a holiday you're gonna have, mm-hmm. right? Um, stat, you know, if you're flying around for your business, you know, meeting clients and stuff, domestic, international, you know, you, at some point you might be racking up a bit of status. You might hit silver, gold, platinum with one of the airlines, and that's when the perks really start to, you know kick in right so suddenly you've got lounge access and you know there's drinks and suddenly you've got meetings in there and it's pretty cool um you know you get to you know you get sort of platinum type level you got like a, maybe a first class lounge access it brings it takes a bit of the pain out of travel 
right? But it makes it a little more bearable. Yeah. Especially in today's world where travel is expensive and not as fun as it used to be sometimes. So, um, so when airlines know, hotels as well, when you've got status, you it's kind of like golden handcuffs. You're kind of you're locked into that brand a little bit, right? Because if you've got like a platinum status with one airline, why would you fly anyone else? Because you're not mm-hmm. going to get the perks, right? Like if you think about it, if you're a top tier like a platinum and you're an economy class, right? You get you get all the benefits of being in business class, except the seat, basically. Yeah. So, um, so if the other airline wants to get your business, right? How do they do that, right? So they could throw discounts at you all day long, but that's just not going to move the needle. You don't care about discounts because you're a business owner and 50 bucks here. That's not, not the end of the world, right? So um, airlines, again, 30 years ago, figured out that offering a status match is the biggest, the most effective way to, to acquire these people from one brand to another. And, you know, people that have status um, and a lot of business owners, small business owners do as well, have status on airline. Um, you know, if you've got status, you're in the top 5% of global travelers in the world today, right? Because most people don't travel. So that, that's yeah. why it's on top. And these people contribute somewhere between, you know, 30 and 40% of total revenue for the airlines. So it's the single most valuable group of travelers that airlines um, have. The airlines want to look after these people mm-hmm. and they do what they can. So, you know, getting status uh, has a lot of perks um, that come with it. And so, you know, if you can consolidate travel into one brand, obviously it gets, um, pretty beneficial Hmm. yeah i i like the concept of it and it makes a a hell of a lot of sense really doesn't it you know if you you, like yourself when you've moved countries and obviously Qantas is i mean they it services hong kong but it's not the sort of national airline or one of the most the country's most prolific airlines so um you know it makes sense in that regard but you know say you go from like one brain of Qantas in Australia and um, I, I think Jetstar's not Qantas, is it? Jetstar's different. Um, group. Uh, different. Um, ha- it, does Qantas and Jetstar have a, you know, a status match thing that they use? Uh, I, I mean, if you, so Qantas owns Jetstar and so they've got some sort of minor reciprocal benefits where if you've got status and you're flying internationally, you can some benefits there i think you can pay some fees and get some extra points and stuff like that so they've got a bit of a quirky relationship um but you know if you are flying to your point you know really in hong kong um cathay pacific and Qantas, they're friends through the one world alliance and so i could have just leveraged that um but you know there's uh there's what i call the is the loyalty program, which is most people think of points, right? Mm. Points are not free. There's actually quite a lot of money there. There's a lot of economics behind that. Um, and then there's what I call the business of loyalty, which is points and selling points to banks, which is how loyalty programs, airline loyalty programs make their money to the degree where um, in the USA, very publicly in the last couple of years, the, the airlines, there, the loyalty program, they're very sophisticated businesses now. Um, they have their own PL, their own departments. A lot of times, they're it's their own entity as well. Um, to the point where these loyalty businesses are worth more than the entire airline itself, right? As its own asset. And the US airlines have leveraged this um, during the last few years to secure government, lo- basically mortgaging the loyalty program uh, to secure funds for the airline. Um, you know, for, <laughs> really quite an effective asset to sort of put out there. Um, to the point where, you know, like American Airlines, was about, the loyalty program was valued at about, I can't remember exactly, I think it was about $25, $26 billion. Uh, this is at the same time that the entire damn airline group on the market, the market capitalization was about $10 billion, right? Oh, wow. So you think the loyalty program is worth so much more. I mean, they need each other. The airline mm-hmm. needs to exist. The, they, they need each other to, to bounce off these valuations. And this is pretty typical of a lot of, big airlines uh, globally where the loyalty program is just worth considerably more in Australia, both the big Australian brands, similar type setup, not to the extreme as the U S but uh, pretty similar where the loyalty is incredibly valuable. And what, what drives that is obviously selling points to banks through credit cards and stuff like that. And off what diving a bit deeper is because it's high margin revenue, right? So 
when they sell a point to a bank, I'm making numbers up here, but say they're selling a point for a cent, right? Mm. And then when you redeem that point, you're redeeming at the value of say half a cent, right? So there's a 50% margin effect, the gross mm. margin effectively in there, which for an airline is fantastic margin because when you buy that economy ticket from Melbourne to Sydney, maybe it's like a 3% margin, you know? And so um, there's a bit of that and there's a bit of how the market will value um, a business, like it's seen as a marketing company or a technology company, which obviously it's some high multiples in the market and where versus an airline, like if you're really, really well run it, like you're like a Singapore airlines, right? Like really a world or an Emirates or something like that. If you're someone like that, the absolute best you're ever going to see in the public market is about a 10 times profit to earnings ratio. Like that's absolute best case. Like, and that's with billions of dollars and decades of experience and the best product and, you know, attention to detail and always on time. And like, that's like the best you could ever hope to aspire to. And that's what we're going to get 10 times versus, you know, lots programs just waltz in there and say, well, we're, we're a marketing technology company. We're worth at least 30 to 40 times. Mm -hmm. So as an airline, if you've got choice of, do I put a dollar of profit into loyalty or a dollar of profit into the airline, it's going to be worth three, four times more in the loyalty business. So mm -hmm. hence that's why airlines push their loyalty programs because they're extremely profitable. Yeah, I know with um with uh, Coles and Woolworths here, um, you use their, you know, the flybys or the 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 Coles everyday uh, Woolworths everyday rewards, they're pushing for you to um swap your your points for airline and do it that way. Um, I don't know. Is there a, a better benefit to to doing that? Or as a consumer, I think so. Well, I mean, you've really got a choice. Do you want effectively a discount on mm -hmm. keeping your points within the local ecosystem, or do you transfer them out to an airline? And there's benefits. Obviously, as a consumer, you, tra you transfer it to an airline. You can consolidate them and that builds towards your balance. Because I mean, most people don't have own businesses that mm -hmm. <laughs> could put lots of credit card points through you know every month not everyone has two thousand dollar month electricity bills right so yeah. keep that in mind um hence the few hundred dollars that always every month that earns a few hundred points you know that aggregated that plus a little bit of credit card spend plus the insurance plus all these other things you get in points from that aggregates and maybe over a year or two you, you get a free trip domestically somewhere right or enough points for that that's loosely the logic behind it uh for like the business side of it makes a lot of sense for like a coals or worse because when you transfer your points out you are um it, in a funny way you're locking yourself into the the supermarket brand as well right so you're you're getting a, a there's a redemption at that point you're redeeming your points for something to get more points with someone that you value so they know so that they know what you value at that point so they know well, okay this person it's totally into the Qantas program. Cool. Okay. Um, they know that people that send points to Qantas are more likely to do X, Y, and Z and buy these sorts of things. Therefore, they're maybe less price sensitive on this product and this, and this kind of product, right? A bit of that, but it's also customer acquisition, right? Because let's face it, whereas the Coles is probably worse. <laughs> yeah. Within, so you do have a choice. A lot of people have a choice, especially in metro areas, hmm. right? Where big parts of the population are, right? So if you've got a choice and you value Qantas points versus velocity points, mm. right? You're going to go to Woolworths versus Coles, right? Yeah. And so what's happening is it's actually the airline brand driving your decision-making on which supermarket you go to. So that's that's why supermarket, that's why they offer these options where you can redeem points uh, into these brands because they're it's, it's like a... I don't want to say customer acquisition, but it kind of is. Mm. It's, it's ongoing customer acquisition by virtue of, of aligning the two brands together. So it's like one plus one equals three, kind of but loosely the concept there. Yeah, when I mentioned Jetstar before, I meant Virgin. I couldn't think of them at the time, though. <laughs> <laughs> I was having a senior moment. <laughs> pretty, pretty much the same, Jetstar and Virgin, maybe. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. No. Never mind. <laughs> Mark, it's... It's a, a wonderful concept. Where can people find out more about it? Uh, yeah, I mean, if you, you've got status with an airline or hotel, check out statusmatch.com. We've got a lot of information on there. 
Um, you know, we deal with uh, a lot of other uh, broader brands to do with um, elite status um, in the travel industry, and that's at loyaltydata.co. Um, but otherwise, you know, connect with me personally. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm pretty active on there. You could just search, search my name. I'm the only, probably, yeah. the, hopefully the only Mark Ross fifth. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> we we didn't want two of you. <laughs> Mark, it's been an absolute pleasure. If you were to offer advice to somebody or some words of wisdom, what would they be? Uh, I mean, definitely for business owners, be a customer of your own product if you can, uh, if it makes sense to do that. I th- I I feel that when you use your product every day or every every week you you start to learn what you don't actually you know there's a really good example of um it's about probably about 10 years ago or so with facebook and i remember um they had a pretty terrible android mobile app at the time and i read this thing about mark zuckerberg allegedly uh forced all the developers in the in the app team to use android devices as phones so they weren't allowed to use iphones anymore it's like just get rid of that they use android and what that meant is when the developers themselves in their own personal life they're using facebook right they're doing photos and talking to friends and this is 10 years ago when everyone yeah. used facebook right so they're doing that and they're getting frustrated with all the bugs right so they're like oh gee i wish and you know if you're a developer you're thinking a certain way you're thinking I upload this photo, you're thinking, oh, I know that connects to this API, that goes to this server, that, that that's how they're thinking, right? So when things are slow, they're thinking through that process and how can I make it better for me, as in them, which if they improve it for them, it improves it for billions of other people around the world. So I think that's a great example of being a customer of your own product. And now the Android app is a lot better than the iPhone app, funny enough. So maybe they need to switch it around again. So I'm I'm just a big fan of, you know, really just being a customer of your own product, you know, um, as, as much as it makes sense to to do so. Because then you understand your customers better. You understand what makes them tick. You understand what they're willing to um, buy as well and not buy. There might be opportunities out there where they're willing to pay for extra stuff that you don't know about yet. So I think just getting your hands dirty, being your own customers, I think is a fantastic idea. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, that's great advice. Thanks for sharing, Mark. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me today and um, I look forward to talking with you again soon. Thanks, Rose. It's been great. Bye. You've been listening to Talking with the Experts, hosted by Rose Davidson. Make sure you have a look at our back catalogue over at talkingwiththeexperts.com and be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any episode. We look forward to your company next time. Talking with the experts.